brothers and sisters. So we take a break today from our discernment series and just to share a few things. Uh, a while ago, I was reading a few days ago already, uh, a story of Sister Bridge McKenna. Many of you will know Sister Bridge McKenna, uh, this incredible Franciscan sister who was really paralyzed and in a wheelchair. And one day at Mass, heard our Lord Jesus speak to her and say, Bridge, I heal you, get up. And I would, and later on, um, he revealed to her that he would use her to be an instrument of healing for many nations. But anyway, during this Mass, I think it was in the context of the Holy Mass, that the Lord spoke to her this word, and you know, she started to get feeling back into her feet, and she she walked, and she was healed. And the Lord has used her. I have no doubt, I don't know what the inventory of the miracles or the accounts of God's wonders through this this amazing Irish woman, uh, this, this sister who dedicated her life to the Lord. But one of the secrets of her life is Eucharistic adoration, just like the good Saint John Paul. She committed and promised the Lord to pray at least three hours a day. I'm not sure if that's specifically in front of the tabernacle, but I know, and I have met her, and I know the Eucharist is central to her ministry, the Lord Jesus himself, uh, central. Where else would you go? Those words, uh, you know, to, to Peter, as, pe as Peter said, sorry, to the Lord, no, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. Where would, where else would we go? Lord Jesus, you are God. And so, anyway, Sister Bridge was giving us a story about one of the early in, uh, <laughs> invites that she had was to give a, a talk to a, a bunch of priests. And back in the day, uh, before she was accustomed to, you know, preaching to priests and to, to giving ministry to priests and in a special way, the priest has a great love on her heart and to help priests in their journey and especially priests maybe who are discouraged or burnt out or have gone through whatever maybe sinful uh, falls on their priesthood just like Peter and uh, you know many of the apostles on their own journey and many of the saints uh, she before that she the first invitation she had to the priesthood she to give a retreat to these priests she was really nervous because you know she felt she was this sister and here these priests and this is back in the day where I suppose, you know, it wasn't as common for nuns to be giving retreats to priests and talks. And uh, she knew this particular crowd she was going to were particularly a tough crowd. And the priest who had invited her kind of said to her, this is a tough crowd and I'm not sure they even want to be here. The bishop has called them all together and I think they'd much prefer to be off uh, in their parishes and doing work. But here they are together for this day um, retreat. And so... She started to pray a lot to St. Therese of Lisieux. And she asked St. Therese because of her love for priests. St. Therese, Therese herself demonstrated a great love for priests and uh, prayed a lot for priests on, in her contemplative enclosed life in the Carmel in Lisieux. And so she prayed a lot to St. Therese. And, you know, the talk started to go pretty well and their response was much better that all their attitudes changed. At the very end of it, an Irish Monsignor priest came up to her and said, you know, I'm not one for visions or seeing things, but when you were giving one of the talks, I clearly saw St. Therese of Lisieux next to you. And he, and he said, do you have a devotion to her? And uh, so Sister Bridge then knew that, you know, because she was praying constantly to St. Therese for them. And so she, she knew that, 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 St. Therese was with her and obviously there was many fruit uh, from her, her talks. I mean, of course, I think so much of her ministry and her fruit come from her intimacy with Jesus in prayer. I mean, our lives are fruitful if we pray. The more we pray, the more fruitful our lives are. And that's just a tried and tested spiritual principle of the spiritual life. And so one of the, the major points that Sister Bridge notes about this is just how much the saints do listen to us. And she says how much it's how so important it is when we're naming our children in baptism that we give them Christian names or we give them names that, you know, that are found in the Bible or, or names, especially when we give them Christian names of saints. You know, a, uh, this is not her own teaching, but we do believe, and that's why we give them names of saints, is that that saint in heaven is particularly associated with um, that child and that and they become like a heavenly patron a heavenly guide and heavenly protector you know these saints don't lose their personality when they go to heaven they're, they're alive and they're real in God in fact they're more real in the sense that they're 
closer to the source of all reality, God, than we are. They participate more fully in divine being, more fully into the inner life of God in heaven. And so they're more real in that sense. And, and they know God and they have access to God, you know, in incredible ways uh, because they're in perfect communion with him in heaven. And so, and so they really help us. And so, you know, so for us to recover or restore our sense of confidence in, um, in this heavenly saints. Lastly, I want to share with you this, that apparently the crow is the only bird that will be bold enough to attack an eagle. And apparently it goes on the back of the eagle and pecks at its neck. And apparently the eagle stays absolutely calm and quiet and, and just decides to soar higher and higher and higher until the crow loses oxygen because the eagle has a greater capacity. And so the story is that when sin pecks at us, soar high in prayer. 